222 today we will talk about XLM and Soraban smart contracts. And I have an overview here that was put together from the XX account. And as we now know, P Protocol 20 was delayed in late January in order to uh, take care of a few bug fixes just to try to make everything as complete as possible up front. But we are now days away. So on February 20th, they will have a vote in order to roll out Protocol 20 that includes smart contracts. So now we are locked and loaded. XLM is expected to be quite something this time around. And especially with the native XLM smart contracts and how that can affect things such as SHX, Aqua, and Velo, which I talk about a lot. So the whole idea here is that the XLM smart contracts will be minimalist by design and could unlock a new frontier for NFTs. And if you expand that to how XLM is really concentrating on tokenization now, that implies that there is a lot of opportunity for tokenization of real world assets on XLM. And it might just end up being key for XLM L2s such as SHX, which I talk about a lot because about 40% of all tokenized treasuries run on, on XLM. And with the complicated transactions, having on-chain smart contracts would enable a a XLM to end up in a position where they are even more uh, adoptable for this kind of work in tokenizing real world assets. And I found this part interesting. Um, they have a state expiration. And what that means is that in short, applications must pay for space on XLM, which can be thought of like paying rent for an apartment each month and the bill is paid in XLM. And an interesting note is that I found out that Soraban is actually Japanese abacus and I feel like it will help XLM be able to count more and more value that comes in. So that is my one ch ch cheesy joke for our content t today. I apologize about that. So here is what Soraban and the smart contract platform is all about. So I will start with what it actually is and then explain more about the coding itself. But it is designed for builders. It is designed to expand and it is designed for real world applications on a proven and mature network that can transact 150 t t TPS. So we are close to the protocol 20 release now and the actual coding involves rust and web assembly which i will talk a bit more about and it seems as if it is relatively easy for people who actually understand coding to create a smart contract on this platform so Project J J Jump Cannon was uh, essentially the project that was launching Soraban contracts. And this right here was published in 2022. And it doesn't have a lot of really interesting things in here. But I thought that the name itself was actually pretty cool. I do want to touch on the XLM integration into Flare because I do think that that platform 
will have long-term success, but now that XLM has on-chain contracts, they don't have to rely on Polaire to do a lot of what they are trying to, to, to do. And that partnership was announced in 2021 where the Flare networks said that they would integrate XLM as an F a asset, which essentially means that it can be put on that p platform and used as a cross-chain bridge. Now we've got Core on here, and I found a little bit more on that. Um, Core is essentially the validator level of XLM, and it can be configured to be either a basic or a full validator. So now we've got something about the actual coding and how this works. Um, I'm not a coder and I hope everyone understands that, but I did think that it would be interesting to see what kinds of companies actually uh, regularly code with these kinds of programming languages. And Rust is a relatively new coding language because it came out in about 2011, but it has been picked up a lot by companies like Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. And for web assembly, I did find it interesting that a good rule of thumb is to use WebAssembly for computationally intensive tasks such as games, image manipulation, math, etc. And uh, I think that math part will probably be the most important thing in terms of what XLM is trying to do with these on-chain contracts. And I did see a tweet on this earlier. It looks as if the actual platform itself has opened up in Canada right now, although I cannot confirm if uh, it is just online and, and you can't actually use it yet, or if you are able to begin to implement some things on there right now at this time.